and her testimony is extremely important to me. I want the flow of the cross-examination to go effectively and timely. If there's a law for, you know, uh, objection, certainly make it. You've got that right, and I'll allow you to make the record. But I want, it's too choppy for me to follow. I'm not following what Ms. Brendel is saying. And I want that effective <coughs> flow to aid in presenting it for effectiveness and ascertainment of the truth, and also for, I, we don't, we're spending needless amounts of time. Ms. Manley, I'm yes, going chastise you and ask you not to quite editorialize so much, although I recognize this is cross-examination. This is your first time to be able to judge the credibility of the witness, to be able to prepare yourself for her testimony at circuit court should I bind this over. I'm giving you the leeway I would normally give a cross-examination attorney, which Ms. Lindsay will give that leeway if and when you put on my testimony. But I'm telling you both, I can't follow what this witness is testifying to during this cross because of all of the objections. Thank now, you, Judge. Is there anything you want to put on the record, Ms. Lindsay, before I call the witness back in? As long as the court has indicated that he should keep the, the editorializing to a minimum. Um, to a minimum, but understand, this is cross-examination. I, I, I understand that, Judge, but cross-examination still has to follow the rules of evidence. You just don't get to do, you don't get carte blanche because it's cross-examination. You get more carte, carte blanche than what you're trying to give him. Bring the witness back in, please. Yes, sir. Save a bottle of water for her. All right, yeah, get bad water in the back here. Then go. Then go. That was a trick. Oh. oh. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, just to let you know, sir, the court left off the, at the statement where there were three lemon drops and then it was later changed to two drum, lemon drops. That's Thank you. Where my notes stopped. Okay. Ma'am, you're at this bar with people from your workplace, is that correct? Correct. And again, that's the Sweetwater Cafe, is that correct? Correct. And you're drinking, we've gone through that, is that correct? Correct. And you're not eating, is that correct? I had eaten that day. At a bar? I yes, I did eat it. What did you have at the bar? I believe I split like cheese bread or bread sticks with the group. So you may have had some uh, cheese sticks or, or bread that, at the bar? Yes. Okay, excellent. You were there also with a, a Mr. Bryant, is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Michael Bryant is your boyfriend, is that correct? Correct. And he was your boyfriend for approximately four and one half years at that particular time, is that also correct, ma'am? Correct. And he was there with you. He also works at the Whaley Home, does he not? Correct. And he was there with you. He had a vehicle at that time, did he not? Yes, he did. In fact, yeah. You, that's your living boyfriend, Mr. Bryant, is that right? Correct. So you would be, you kept talking about going home, so my understanding is that you would be going home to Mr. Bryant, is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Bryant was there at the Sweetwater Cafe, is that also correct? Correct. And Mr. Cleaves is at the Sweetwater Cafe, is that correct? Correct. And you left with Mr. Cleaves, you did not leave with Mr. Bryant, is that correct? Correct. And isn't it true that uh, you testified this morning something about going to Warwick Hills, is that correct? Correct. And that was your reasoning that you said why you got in the car with Mr. Cleaves, is that correct? Correct. But isn't it true on uh, September 17th, 
on page 20, when you talked to uh, Detective Nearing, you said, uh, I don't remember getting into the car with Mateen. Isn't that true, ma'am? Correct. Yeah, I'm going to object uh, under, um, I'm sorry, but under the rule of completeness under page 21, she speaks about getting it, about going to Warwick on page 21. So under the rule of completeness, I want it all together. That's, uh, there's no rule, there's no way to even no respond to that. that one statement. Yeah. Consider it a continuing objection. Thank you. Thank you. So the fact of the matter is, just like I said this morning, you don't remember, do you? That part of the evening, no. And you only thought this where we kill this thing only came about after you had talked to other people. Isn't that true, ma'am? Remember, you're under oath. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Bailey. I didn't hear the question. She said, the fact that I'll re-ask it, you don't remember anything about Warwick Hills, that came up after you talked to uh, Brooke Adams. Isn't that true? Not after I talked to Brooke, but after I talked to other people there, yes, correct. So the fact of the matter is, when you said this morning that you remembered getting into Mr. Cleve's car and going to Warwick Hills, that's not true, is it? After it being discussed with other people, yes, I remember. Yes, I remembered that. The key part, after it's being discussed with other people, you have no independent memory. Isn't that correct? Correct. And isn't it true that you left your live-in boyfriend at the bar, right? He was going to deal with another friend. Or else was we going to the same place? I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood my question. You left your live-in boyfriend at the bar and got into the car with someone else. Correct. And there was room in the car with Michael Boyd, correct? Michael Bryant, excuse me. Correct. And isn't it true, ma'am, you honestly don't know why you got into the car, you say, at that time with Mr. Cleves. Isn't that right? No, it's not correct. Okay, so on page 20 when he said, when Detective Nearing said at the bottom, and that's my question, why wouldn't you get in the car with Mike? And you say, I honestly don't know. I don't know if. I know why I wouldn't, why I'd... I know my thought process on why I got in the car with Mr. Cleves instead of Michael. But your question on page, uh, bottom of page 20, when Mr. Nearing asked you, and that's my question, why wouldn't you get in the car with Mike? Your answer, Emily Brendel, I honestly don't know. I don't know if. Under the rule of completeness, page 21, she explains further why, what her thought process was. He's asking her right now, he will then proceed to page 21. Thank you. And it went on, isn't it true, that when you were talking to Mr. Nairn, he's trying to give you answers, and he says to try to tell you that a defense attorney is going to ask you questions if you can't come up with some story. Isn't that true, ma'am? Objection, Your Honor. If he's going to use the transcript or what Nearing said, it has to be verbatim what was said. Judge, you know what? You can't tell the I didn't. It's a question with isn't it true? It was not read off the transcript. I thought the court just admonished both counsel to allow us to have a, a cross examination. We've now I've asked three questions or four. There have been three uh, objections. And the, it's not, I'm referring to inconsistent statements that this woman is, is given which are completely diametrically opposed from this morning, and I'm allowed to do it. And I'm going to tell you that I have told Ms. Lindsay, and I will tell her again, this is a continuing objection. I understand it. It is on the record. I understand completeness. I'm going to allow you to cross-examine this witness as to her statements to the police. Please go ahead. 
Thank you. Isn't it true, ma'am, that Detective Nearing was telling you how to answer questions because he said that a defense attorney was going to ask you questions? Isn't that true? He was not telling me how to answer questions. Did he mention about the defense attorney? At this point, I do not recall that statement. Well, I'll read it to you. It's on page, page 21 of Nearing's draft statement, the recorded statement. Because if we get, we get to take this to court, a defense attorney is going to ask the same thing. Your boyfriend is there. Why didn't you get into the car with him? And your answer, I honestly, from talking, talk things up, doesn't make sense. My thought process was either we're going back to Warwick or I just got in the car because we're all going to the same place. I was under the impression. I was being taken home. I just going to, but most importantly, I don't know. I don't know. He has to read it. If he was reading from the page. He has to read it verbatim. He can't put in and inject most importantly. I'm sorry, Judge, but if you're doing it, you have to do it correctly. He's reading from you the page. He has to read verbatim. You add the most important yeah, I'll take that out. Take that out. Okay. Read it. At the bottom, at the end of it, it <clears throat> says, I don't know, I don't know. Judge, can we have it read from start to finish the way it was because he broke it up with his editorializing? I will read it slow right up to the part where she said she doesn't know. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yes. Let me see here. I honestly, this is the question, because this is Michael Nairing. Because if we get if we get take this to court, a defense attorney is going to ask you the same thing. Your boyfriend is there. Why didn't you get in the car with him? Emily Brendel. I honestly, I from take from talking trying to talk things out, with this trying to make sense of it in my head, my thought process was either that we were going to back up to Warwick so that I just got in the car because that's where we're all going to the same place, or I was under the impression that I was going to be taken home and that he was just going to drive uh, me home. I, I don't know, I don't know. So my question to you, ma'am, is all these other options that you've listed there are suggestions that have been made from all your little friends at Whaley. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of when you were talking to Nearing, you said you don't know. They were not suggestions made by other people. Ma'am, you said Brooke Adams, your boyfriend, you've talked to all these people. Did you not say, maybe I'm misunderstanding, is this not your, on uh, page 21, can you read that right there? Where is that say? I don't know. I don't know. Speak right up. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. No question you leave uh, Sweetwater with Mr. Cleaves, is that right? Correct. And you get into his vehicle, is that correct? Correct. This morning you said that uh, you got on an expressway. Correct. Isn't it true, ma'am, that you just turned right and went right down to the uh, gas station? That I don't know. Who told you about the expressway? Where did that come in? From my memory, I thought I had been on the expressway. So that's something you remember even though there wouldn't be any expressway between Sweetwater and the gas station? That's just something that you came up with? Objection in form of the question, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Overruled. Isn't that something you just came up with? There's no expressway there. That's where I had thought I was at the time. So when you say you thought, if there's nothing there, you would be mistaken in your thought. Isn't that true, ma'am? Yes, I could be mistaken. And let's talk about that. Uh, from the time of Sweetwater to the gas station. That's a very short little jaunt, isn't it? Yes. And today, you said, you, you made it sound almost, man, dirty. You, you said gas station liquor store. Is that, is that how you describe it? That's what it is. There's okay. a gas station there, and there's a liquor store there. There's a liquor store, there's a gas station. Do you know what, what kind of station that is? Um, I do not. Okay. You said it was near, what was it, Genesee Fieldhouse where you used to play soccer? Yes. Okay. So you're kind of familiar with the area? Yes. Okay. 
Well, when I think of little gas station liquor store, now this is a shell station, right? Remember that? I don't remember that. I just said I didn't know what kind of gas station it was. Okay. Do you remember that if there's 12 pumps in the front? No, I do not remember do that. You, do you remember that there's all types of lights there? I don't remember that. Do you remember that there's a McDonald's attached to it? I do not remember that. Do you remember that it's open 24-7? That's information that I didn't know that night. Well, that would be information that would be immediately visible to you as you walk, as you got out of the car. But not information that I remember. So you don't remember any of that. But conspicuously, you remember asking for a phone, right? A phone charger, yes. Yeah. And about that, you said that uh, Mr. Cleves, and it sounded kind of nefarious, that Mr. Cleves would not give you a phone charge or something to that effect. Isn't that right? I said that he didn't, he said he didn't have one. <laughs> well, he didn't have one. That's a lot different than he wouldn't give you one. True? True. So you walk into the bathroom. You, you say, you ask for a phone. Do you remember what kind of phone it was? It was a handheld phone. Handheld phone. Mm -hmm. It was a handheld phone. And you go into a, a bathroom. Yes. Right? Well, at this 24-hour McDonald's convenience store and so forth, can you tell me, just do you have any idea, any memory of all, how large it is? No. So you don't have any memory about that at all? I remember walking in, asking for the phone, and walking to the bathroom. Okay, you didn't describe the bathroom today, so one might think that was just a small little bathroom. Describe that bathroom for me. There were, I believe, two stalls. I went to the last one, which was a handicap stall. So you remember that there's three stalls counting the handicap, correct? I remember there being two. I don't know if there was three with a handicap. I just remember going to the handicap one and that there was more than one stall. So it's a big, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't object if someone said, if Steve Klein said that uh, the guy got the phone from, that there was three. You wouldn't object to that? No. Okay. So this is not some little mom and pop store, some little teeny bathroom in there. There's three big stalls yes, in there, including. Answer this. The number of stalls and how many stalls an ask and answer. It makes a difference because of the, the way they're trying to describe the uh, scene as it's large. But I can move on. Of course, I've already taken notes. I've already taken yeah. notes. When you walked in, where did you get the phone? From the attendant at the checkout counter. How do you remember that? I remember asking for it. Okay, but you don't remember that it's big, you don't remember that it's lighted, right? Correct. You don't remember that it's a truck stop? Those weren't my concerns at the time, no. You don't remember that there's a McDonald's that's 24-7? Objection, those questions have been asked and answered, Judge. No, I'll move, I'll move on. So as you walk in, do you remember going into the front door? Yes. Do you remember walking towards the bathroom that you said? I walked to the counter, asked for the phone, and walked to the bathroom. And you said that you were concerned, and that's why you were making the call, correct? Correct. And you had, you took a phone from the clerk, right? Correct. Did you, because I know you didn't, share your concerns with the clerk? No, you, I didn't. Did you call 911? No, I didn't. Did you stand in the middle of this truck stop and say, I'm fearful, somebody call my boyfriend? No, I didn't. Did you call your mom? No, I didn't. Did you, at any point in time, have Mr. Cleves do anything forcibly to remove you from that uh, largely lit, full-service McDonald's 24-hour place? No. Isn't it true, ma'am, that uh, you rode over there you left voluntarily with Mr. Cleaves, right? Yes. You told Mr. Cleaves that you'd been with ballers before. 
you, you know what Objection, you're doing. Objection, Your Honor. To what? First of all, what hearsay exceptions does that fall under? It's, it, it's her statement. It's and it's certainly, I, I'll even offer it not even for the truth of the matter asserted, it's but what goes, excuse me, for what it goes to what she did next. No. Judge, if he wants to put in supposedly that statement, that statement would have to come in through his client. He's putting this in as, as, as hearsay, and he can argue, he can say he's not, but that's exactly what it is. Okay, if this statement is going to say, going to why she did what she did next, it's not hearsay. I don't see that connection right now. Okay. Did, tell me about the sunroof that you were playing with. You talked to Detective Nearing about uh, that you were having fun playing with the sunroof uh, of Mr. Cleves' car. I remember opening the sunroof Do you remember and telling looking out of it. That it was fun? Excuse me. You asked the question before. I'm having difficulty hearing down. my answer. I'll slow it down. You, you remember opening the sunroof, ma'am? Yes, or it being opened and looking out of it, yes. Okay, when you say looking out of it, do you mean bending your head back and looking out, or do you mean standing up like, and looking out? Standing up and looking out of it. And didn't you tell Detective Nearing, isn't it true, that it was fun to, to mess around with the sun or moon roof? I said I did it because it seemed fun at the time. Well, if you don't remember, and now you've got to go into your next, and this is a very short period of time, but now you feel that you're threatened, right? I felt concerned because I was not where I thought I was where I thought I was supposed to be. But seconds earlier, you're having fun playing with Mr. Cleves' sunroof. Because I was under the impression that we were going to Warwick and going to a gas station is not Warwick. But you just said moments ago you had no idea until you talked to somebody else that you knew anything about Warwick. Somebody else told you that. You, you didn't, you knew where you were going. No, I was not informed of where I was going. Mm -hmm. Tell me in great detail that uh, who, and I'll get to your call, but tell me who you told, because that's a very busy uh, station. Besides the clerk, there's at least the, ga there's the gas station people, there's the McDonald's people. Tell me who you expressed your concerns to about your being in uh, alleged fear. I don't remember talking to anybody other than the clerk asking for the phone at the gas station. And you, you said you went to the bathroom, right? Correct. And so then you knew because if you went to the bathroom, where was Mr. Cleese? Mr. Cleese was buying some juice? I don't know what he was doing at the time. So you have no idea what Mr. Cleese was? He was in the store. Okay. So tell me what your thought process was since when you walk in the front door, you can walk directly out the back through sliding doors. Why, if in fact you thought that uh, you were in some danger, why you didn't go out the back door? I didn't see the back doors, apparently. So you don't remember seeing the back door? No. Isn't it true, ma'am, that indeed Mr. Cleves was a celebrity at your golf outing? Correct. You had decided to hook up with him? No. Isn't it true that your call was to Mr. Bryant was to establish your uh, little alibi? No. Then why in the world, if you felt compelled, and I'll listen, and you scared, did you not tell any of the people in that store that you were fearful? Because at the time, I was not... At the time, my concern was that I was not where I was supposed to be, or where I thought I was supposed to be. And my phone was dead, and I had no way, hold it, no way of getting a hold of anybody. So I was trying to call Michael to inform him of where I was and see if they were out, see where they were. Well, why not just stand out there at the clerk and say, uh, I'm going to make a call. Why not stand under one of the cameras? Because I wanted to go to the bathroom for more privacy for that call. Well, your story is that you didn't want to go, that you were somehow feeling threatened because of a phone charger. Objection, that is not, that's a mischaracterization of our testimony. I don't get mischaracterization. The fact of the matter is, ma'am, you've inferred 
and said that you felt threatened and that's why you were calling and something was wrong. And my question to you is, that place is lit up like Yankee Stadium. There's security cameras everywhere. Why didn't you just stand there if you felt that somebody was going to do something to you? Objection. I'm sorry, Your Honor. She, that was not the testimony. I'm, I'm objecting from Ms. Kerr. What do you believe that the testimony was? She testified in the car that she asked for the phone charge. That's what she said, and she told her you had it. She testified about once she was in the room, she was concerned because she didn't have a, her phone was dead. And if she, she testified she was concerned at the station. I don't know if you didn't hear it, but let me refer back to my notes and make sure I heard it. Okay. She didn't share her concerns with the attendant, 911, call her mother, or contact any other customer. She had concerns. But that was on Foster, that was on the right. Right. Well, he's just following up with the concerns. Ma'am, you certainly had the ability to stand there. You're not saying that uh, you were disabled at that point. You attempted to call somebody, correct? Correct. And you certainly could have called 911, correct? Correct. You certainly could have stood there and yelled out for help, correct? Correct. And you certainly would agree with me that nobody forced you back into any vehicle with Mr. Cleves. Isn't that true, ma'am? Correct. So you got into that car voluntarily, isn't that true, ma'am? Correct. You, you remember it, it was saying earlier today that you told Mr. Cleves, oh, I want to go home. Correct. Yeah. And isn't it true when you talk to uh, Sergeant Nearing, Detective Nearing, on uh, September 17th, you told uh, on page 27, I remember once, I remember once saying it once. So you told by your own statement, supposedly, Mr. Cleves one time that you wanted to go home. Correct. And that was, be, I mean, you told him that before you kissed him back. Was that a question? Oh yeah, no, that's a question. <laughs> you told Mr. Cleves, your whole thing this morning was that you told Mr. Cleves you wanted to go home, right? Yes, I did. And you told Mr. Nairing that you said that one time. Yes, I did. Right, one time. Yes. After you supposedly said that, you kissed Mr. Cleves of your own volition. At that point, what my options were. My question was, you kissed him after you. Correct. Okay. Your Honor, I, what was that answer she gave? I think she, she said correct. I know, but she said something about options. I didn't hear that. She said correct. No, no, before that, she said you something about options. You can ask her on redirect. You can ask her on redirect. Did, did the court hear what she said about options? No, I didn't. Okay, well, can we have clarifications now? about what she, if the, she said something the court didn't hear, wouldn't the court be interested in hearing now what she was saying about options? Well, she said something, I'll ask her. What did you say about options? At that point, I didn't know where I was. I did not have a phone to get a hold of anybody. So I'm not about to upset. I can't physically fight with him if it came to that. So, I was passive regarding the kissing him back. I did not fight that, no. Passive, that's a descriptive word. And you gave statements to 
don't remember the statement, but you gave a statement at the hotel to Detective uh, Johnson. Okay? Okay. You gave a statement to Michelle Most. Remember that? Yes. You gave at least two statements to Detective Nairing. Remember that? Yes. You gave two statements down in Detroit to uh, Miss Lisa, Ms. Lisa Lindsay of the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, right? Yes. One after the uh, interview was cut short when you said you didn't remember, right? Yes. And the only time passive ever comes up is when Miss Lindsay suggests that word to you that you didn't kiss him. You said, I kissed him back. And she said, well, wasn't it more like a uh, passive? That's, she suggested passive. You didn't come up with that. It was not a suggestion. It was not clarification. Objection, Your Honor. You can't argue with the witness like that. I that was a question of the witness. I didn't hear what he said. But the fact of the matter is she suggested Just passive. I want to make a note here. Ma'am, isn't it true that you said you ran out of the room and Mr. Cleves helped you back to the room? He did not help me. He forced me back to the room. Okay. And isn't it true that you said today that you were put on, on the bed, right? Yes. And isn't it true that you, uh, when you talked to the technician, you told him, he asked you, how are you put back on the bed? And isn't it true you said, I have no clue? Correct. So when you're testifying today factually that underwear was moved, right? Right? Correct. And that supposedly took place in the bed, right? Correct. And that so forth, uh, you were partially touched or partially this or that, right? You, you testified to that, right? Right? Right. But when Detective Nairn said, the same bed where you supposedly were assaulted, how you got put on there, which would be simultaneously, supposedly with being assaulted, you say you had no clue. Your Honor, I'm going to object to all that. I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't remember. You don't know. Or you're not telling the truth. What is it? Getting on the bed, no, I do not remember. So you don't remember supposedly getting on the bed, but you remember supposedly being assaulted. Yes. Okay. Now tell me, when you come into the motel, you've, done, you've left the gas station, you've done nothing there, you're back, are you still playing with the moonroof? No. Okay. So you pull into the motel, right? I don't remember pulling into the you motel. You don't pull, remember pulling into the motel? No. Do you remember being seated in the passenger seat? Yes. Do you remember Mr. Cleves going into the uh, office? No. Do you have no memory of that? No, I do not. Do you have any memory of fixing your hair while you're sitting in the car? No. Do you have any memory of the car being on while Mr. Cleves is in, supposedly, in the uh, office? No. Your Honor, at this time I'd like uh, the court to order, I believe it's uh, Exhibit 7 or 8, where the, let's see, there's no mood again where it's been it's been, been, uh, it's been uh, um, yeah. it's uh video is from uh, 315 to 502 now is that just the time that appears on the yes if we've all agreed it's not the correct time right. but we're using it to tick seconds and everything, but, it, right? but it shows the vehicle pulling up it shows and i think it'll help refresh your memory can you we don't have that. That, that's not the, that, that's, not, that's not an exhibit on our proposed exhibit list. Well, I'm sorry. There's a full video approximately one hour, two minutes. There are different camera angles. That's not a camera angle that we clipped or plan to introduce. If, there's, if they want to show a certain camera angle, that is not one of, that was never one of our proposed items. 
I, I don't have a problem with uh, the court allowing me time to show the vehicle and this young lady picture here. You have the here. video? You have the video. We have it. I, I, I'll have to have a tech person do it. They certainly have the ability to do it. Can you get it done before tomorrow morning? Probably not, but I'll try. Because we get it, we can reconvene at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah. And it will be marked by the court recorder as defense proposed exhibit A. Now, Mr. Manley, yes. just so I get this straight, and Ms. Lindsay, I'd, I'd ask you to listen to. You have marked on this chart that you gave me, under seven, full video, five hours, 24 seconds, which everybody agrees is the wrong time, to six hours, two minutes, 35 seconds, and you're gonna show clip one, which goes 520 to 521, right? That's your exhibit, is that clip? Yes, that, that's, that's all they did admit. Yes. Yes. That's, and, and clarifying. Yes. But it comes out of the full video. That comes out of the full video from that camera angle. Okay. Okay. There are several different cameras. Okay, I'm just trying to get here where I'm trying to go. Okay. Mr. Manley claims he has the camera angle that he wants, who retrieved all the videos? Detective Nearing. All right. So this is something Detective Nearing would have retrieved. Yes. My chain of custody is okay. It went to you. Yes. You released it under discovery rules to Mr. Manley. Correct. So there's no reason Mr. Manley can't make a clip Correct. and admit it. Correct. All right. All right. I'd like the clip made if we can by tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you, Judge. And I want it to be consistent with... Court's orders. Uh, the court's orders, but specifically, it has to come out of what they describe as the full video, 5 colon 0 0 colon 2 4 to 6 colon 0 2 colon 35. Yeah, I probably said the wrong time because I'm not a tech guy, but it's within that and as you court elicited, it's within the discovery materials that were presented. Uh, um, when you bring it in, I will mark it, or the court recorder will mark it as proposed defense A. Okay. You testified today, this morning, that you ran, you were in a room, correct? Correct. You witnessed the police, correct? Correct. At some point in time, you ran out of the room. Yes. You were brought back into the room. Yes. You ran out again. Yes. And you said that somebody you saw a lady out there. Yes. And you, nine one one lady. You said you mouth something to her. I right. mouth help me. Yes. Okay. Now, at the same time, Mr. Cleves. Oh, now I'll rephrase that. You said that uh, you knew what time you called Michael Bryant because you looked at Michael Bryant's phone the next day. Correct. You said you got that at uh, 1, 114, I believe, is that right? 114 or 116, you looked at his phone. Correct. Okay. So you also knew... Your Honor, at this point I'm going to object because what she looked at and what time she got from a phone will be hearsay offered for the truth of the matter asserted. So if it's being put in for the truth of the matter asserted, I'm going to object to hearsay. I'm going to give him a minute to respond. Uh, I need to look at some paper. I understand you. Thank you, Judge. Ma'am, isn't it true? <coughs> she, she knows. Your Honor, I'm going to have Jeff, and can we approach?
TRL, Your Honor.
out of court statement for the truth of the matter asserted. What is being asserted? Nothing. The out of court statement is, it says, the out of court statement is a hearsay question. It's done. It's an out of court statement. It's accused of truth. Judge Cap votes one, one, one last time. It might be the, the near end.
There is nothing in your mind that deviates from what you told the prosecutor this morning that you were assaulted between the first run out and the second. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, you indicated that there were only two people in the room, correct? To my knowledge, correct. <coughs> The small room you described it as two beds, a table, and a regular uh, size uh, hotel room. Correct. And you remember that? Yes. Okay. Your boyfriend, Michael Bryant, correct? Correct. He, the live-in boyfriend, correct? Correct. He has a phone, correct? Correct. You said that that the first time you had met Mateen Cleves that night, correct? At Warwick, at the yes. golf outing? Yes, correct. And also, to your knowledge, the first time that Michael Bryant had met Mr. Mateen, please. Is that also correct? To my knowledge, yes. In fact, at the Sweetwater, you guys were in the back uh, shooting baskets at the arcade. Correct. And Excuse Michael. Excuse me, who are you guys? The people from uh, oh. Whaley. Some of the people, but especially the guys. Uh, Brett Warner, Michael uh, Bryant, Mateen, please. They were, they were shooting? Correct. Okay. Now, you indicated that Mateen Cleves and you, there was some dispute, but you ended up with each other's phone numbers. Accurate? There was a conversation, yes. Correct. Okay. When did Michael Bryant give Mr. Cleves his phone number that you saw? I'm not aware. I'm not aware that, or I wasn't aware that Michael had his number. How did you find out that Mateen Cleves had Michael Bryant's number? Did you Objection, give it to him? Your Honor, that that would call for hearsay off for the truth of the matter asserted. Not how she found out wouldn't. What the contents of what is we discussed up here would be, but how she found out would not be. How did you find out? I don't recall finding out that Michael had Mr. Cleves' number. No, no, that Mr. Cleves had Michael's number. I, I don't recall that either. You know because you gave it to him. Okay. I don't You're recall giving question. it to him. That's argumentative. The fact of the matter is you, you gave it to him. Judge, you just said the question was argumentative and then you just said the same thing again. This is typical, Mr. Manley. All right, we're moving on. The fact of the matter is, ma'am, who did you say that you wanted to call that night? Michael. Michael Bryant. Correct. Okay. And you said you told people that, right? I told the woman in the motel room, yes. So would it surprise you that Mr. Cleves called Michael Bryant and texted Michael Bryant from that hotel room at the same time that you were supposed to be being sexually assaulted. Objection assumes facts not in evidence. No, it's a hypothetical. Would it surprise you if you were told? That's a hypothetical. The hy I'm going to allow it. From my understanding, the rules of evidence does not allow a witness because you know what a hypothetical is to a lay witness? It's speculation. That's speculation, Judge. I'm going to define it in my courtroom. It's a hypothetical. Ma'am, would it surprise you, in fact, I'll rephrase it, wouldn't surprise you that Mr. Cleves, the time you said you were being assaulted, was trying to reach the person that you want people to call? Objection, Judge. The part that I'm specifically objected up at is the time that you said it was being assaulted. That part is argumentative. That specific part at the at the time you said you were being assaulted, where's the evidence to support that? Just because he sent a text or suppose that if he did whatever. Just excuse me. He asked, at the time you were being assaulted, did you tell him that you were being assaulted? Yes. Okay. 
being assaulted. And you're objecting to that as facts, not in evidence. But they are. No, no, no. The, the, the part that I'm objecting to is the, the, the supposed text came at the time when she supposedly was... There, okay. There's no evidence that that the time <coughs> is coinciding. That okay. is argumentative. Okay. The court will ask the question. Ms. Brendel, would you be surprised that if sometime during that early morning hours, Mr. Cleves had texted Mr. <coughs> Bryant or Mr. Bryant had texted Mr. Cleves? Would that surprise you? No. Would it surprise you during this time, this very confined time, that you run out and then you say that uh, there was some type of uh, incident that Mr. Cleves attempted to call Brooke Adams? Would that surprise Objection, you? Objection, Your Honor. This is, that assumes facts, not in evidence. It does. I'm going to allow that. You're going to allow I'm not going to allow that. You. Judge, just so I can uh, be clear here, the prosecution has set a very narrow time frame of when they said this assault occurred. They've set with Colleen Dowdell, who they vouched for, the times of the 911 calls, the times of running into the room, the times and so forth. So when they say that this is, assumes facts not in evidence, they've set a timeline. I, I understand. So I can, move, I can move on at this point, but I want it to be clear I that the people of, of Wayne County have set a timeline. Uh, Mr. Manley, please allow me to address that. I understand that the people on the state of Michigan have set this timeline. And I refer you back to our bench conference that this probably is not a particular witness. However, asking her if she's surprised by it or would not be surprised by it is certainly allowed. Okay? Thank you, Judge. But my thing is assuming facts, not in evidence. He talked about something supposedly that he did with somebody named Brooks. There's no facts and evidence to support that, so her being surprised, you still have to do it based, and, and, and even if the court said she's going to allow hypothetical questions, the rules of evidence say that the facts in order to have to be on the record in order to support the hypothetical. And there has been nothing put into evidence, either by Ms. Dowdell or by Ms. Brendel, that this person that you're talking about now was texted or called. But, but, well, I get to ask. Brooke Adams was brought up as one of the people that yes, introduced, she so she was brought up, but and it may have been the introducer, so it would make clear that may be the person if Mr. Cleese was attempting to render aid to this uh, young lady, that she would reach out to Miss Adams. It makes sense. She would reach out or he Mr. Cleves would trying to render aid to her would reach out, I, and Miss Adams was brought into the conversation as either the introducer or one of the people involved either taking the picture, certainly that was involved at Warwick, and then again went to Sweetwater. So she, she's a player in this uh, incident. She is, she is a participant. I'm going to back away from the word player. She is a participant. There is no doubt. Um, but there's no evidence on the record that Mr. Cleve did anything in relationship to a phone call to Brooke Adams after it happened to Poland to render aid, just like there's nothing on the record that he called 911 to render aid to this young lady. I mean, if we're going to have hypotheticals, the court's made a ruling, but she's making a speech. I have, an, uh, I have a text that says the court and knows I, much differently. And I told you. And I kept my mouth shut about it. Yeah. And that was after the second, not, and that was after the 911 calls were made. Actually, it's before, but... We'll get that in. I understand. About. Thank you, Judge. Ma'am, isn't it true that you told Sergeant Narian or one of the investigators the first time you came out, you said you were just going to get some air? I don't recall saying that, but I don't know that I didn't say it either. The fact I'm matter sorry, is... sorry, ma'am, you dropped your voice. I didn't hear you. Your Honor, as it relates to that, if he's going to impeach... Impeachment has to be done specifically with the person you told it to, and you just can't do any nebulous because that doesn't give me notice of who you're specifically talking to. He is talking and has been consistently talking about the interview with Detective Nearing. But no, he said Detective Nearing or some other officer. That's what he said. 
that, that was his question. So I want, specifically want him to identify what this other officer is he's talking about. She, she answered the question. She said that I, she could have gone and said she went out for air. It's been asked and answered. I'll move on. There's no need to impeach somebody who said she went out for air. With all the evidentiary issues, I'm going to ask the court to give me that four uh, minute uh, leeway and uh, take up uh, again in the morning because there's. Uh, You're asking for a recess? Yeah, right? at this time. Ms. Lindsay, do you have any objections? No problem. Okay. I don't have any objections because, quite frankly, things have been difficult enough. Um, so I'm going to make this statement for the record. The courtroom will be open to the media at 8.15 in the morning. You are under the same rules that you are under now, okay? To Ms. Lindsay and Mr. Manley and the rest of you that are in the crowd, unbeknownst that we be doing this, uh-uh, don't everybody start moving around, I'm talking. Unbeknownst that this case would be going today and tomorrow, I scheduled months ago a series of show cause hearings. I probably have 50 or 60 scheduled for tomorrow morning. Those are going to be handled by another judge. If you come in and you're here for the Cleves case, please tell the deputy at the door you are here for the Cleves case because then the rest of the people will be directed to go to courtroom five. Everybody understand? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. We're adjourned for the day. Thank you, Judge.